In our review this week, we talked a little about how easy Code Vein was. So why, you may ask, are we doing one of our trademark tips videos for Bandai Namco's latest Souls-like? Well, the answer is simple. It's because there are some massive difficulty spikes later in the game that, if you are not prepared for, could make you come unstuck rather quickly. So that's why we're here to help you, so you don't get stuck. We're nice like that. You're welcome. So without further ado, folks, here are seven tips to make you a pro at Code Vein, and more importantly, prepare you for those crazy difficulty spikes. <laughs> Parry, dodge, and drain attacks are not to be underestimated in Code Vein. In fact, they are your most powerful tool to take it to the foes in the desolate wasteland. They're not as simple as you would think, though. For instance, the timing window for the parry depends on what blood vial you have equipped. Some, you have to do it super early, like with the demon tail and with the spikes, whereas the other two, you have to be a little later, so with the gauntlets and the demon wolves. The best thing about this is not only does it do great damage, but you can also recover Icor, which powers your gifts. The dodge should not be underestimated either, as it effectively gives you invincibility frames, uh, and we actually recommend diving into enemy attacks, as sometimes it can put you the other side of the enemy, allowing you to do a backstab. And finally, the strain, which you can use perfectly if you aggro enemies and then kind of bait them in and take them down in one fell swoop. It should be said as well that with the dodge being so OP, there are still occasions where block can and should be used, especially if you want to figure out an enemy's attack patterns and whatnot. Don't forget about that block button, folks. We touched briefly on blood vials in the first point, but it's worth understanding a few other things when working out which piece of armor suits your playstyle. Like Soulsborne games, you can choose one piece of armor in the first few hours and still use it all the way until the end of the game, provided you upgrade them, obviously. More on that shortly. But finding out which drain and parry attack suits you, though, is key. We were big fans of the Demon Wolves, so the GXL Defender is great. It's effective against physical damage, but its resistances aren't great other than Venom, but we found that that didn't hamper us too much. We mostly use the Nightclaw though, which has some really good physical defense stats and really good resistance stats. It's great for strength and dexterity builds, which we can't recommend enough. In truth, it's a bit of an all-rounder, which is handy. Its only hang-up is the Drain and the Parry uses the Demon Claw, which we found to be not as effective and deadly as, say, the Wolves themselves. In terms of where to find these items, a plus 9 GXL Defender can be found in the Provisional Government Center and is great for the final, final boss, while the Night Claw can be bought from Murasami in the Hub area. It's rather easy to get the best weapons in Code Vein very early on. And yes, like the Blood Vows, they can be upgraded so that you're using them right at the end. Quite simply, you can get the best weapons, one for each class, from your companions by trading with them in the hub. That's the simple part though. To get them, you need to give your companions gifts and raise their trading points to 50 to be able to get their weapon. Well, a copy of it. And getting 50 points can be a touch arduous. In order to get 50 trading points with a companion, you'll have to give them valuables, which are effectively old world items that carry a ton of value to the person who receives them, but are otherwise useless to us. These valuables can be hard to come by. Only by searching every nook and cranny of every map will you find them. Well, until you meet Shang at the Outer Crossroads, that is, who will exchange valuables for old world materials, another resource that can be found in enemy drops and dotted around the world. Those are the fundamentals of getting 50 valuables, but there is a bit of a tip here, and that's to give the right valuable to the right person. If you're going for Louis Enduring Crimson, which to us is the best sword in the game, try giving him gifts he will actually like. Usual box standard gifts will net you one trading point, but with Louis, try giving him faded comics worth five trading points. Fragrant Tea is easy to come by and gives you three trading points with Louis, however. There are a ton of other gifts that give two points. Fancy Cologne, Boutique Sake, and Chocolate Garlic Flakes, for instance. That's all with Louis. If you opt for a super strength build going with a two-handed sword and want Yakimo's only blade, try giving him aged brandy worth five points or a retro game machine worth three. Until you can get either of these weapons, make do with what you pick up. The Lost Broadsword or the Hanamakuro are good stop gaps.
building your own specialized build in code vein boils down to the game's blood codes which are at the core of its stats based system these dictates what weapons you can use what gifts i.e spells and powers you can use and how much icor you have for the aforementioned gifts they can be given to you as part of the story received from companions you speak to in the hub area or via various other means no spoilers Mixing and matching is the key to finding your perfect build, and that can be done by finding a base blood code that suits your build. For instance, Louis Prometheus is great for combat and saw us well from early game to late game. Once you have found your base blood code, then you can customize the heck out of said blood code, which can be done by becoming proficient at various other blood codes and then taking those gifts and applying them to your current blood code. There are two ways to become proficient with a gift. Number one is fight with the blood code that has that skill that you want, equip the skill that you want to use, and then just fight. Or the way that is slightly less hassle, go to a missile and choose to manually upgrade it using activators, MJ018, 109, and so on, that you find around the world. These can either be found in the environment or you can grind them out by killing enemies. But do check on your companions in the hub area, they might have some to sell. Davis definitely does have a couple to start with. Give him an antique LP worth five trading points and you can get yourself on the right track. It's perfectly easy to grind them though in the main levels and in Davis's depths mini dungeons. Bear in mind that certain ones are tied to levels. I, in the first level, you're only gonna find MJ018. In the later levels, you're only gonna find MJ310. That said, you won't be able to unlock and master every gift of every blood code from the outset. Sometimes you'll need to find vestiges and restore them with EO in the game's hub area. That is an important thing to take note of. Okay, that's the basics, but let's talk about what you should put into the build to get the most out of it. Firstly, find the weapon you always use and get the Weapon Mastery Passive Gift. It adds a significant boost to your attack power, and that is something that you absolutely must do with every build without fail. But the gifts we swore by throughout were the following. The Ranger's Venom Mark, which adds Venom to your current weapon. Louis' Phantom Assault, which makes you disappear and reappear, performing a deadly attack. Davis's Bloody Impact, which can effectively knock over most foes. It's a little OP, this one, so use it. And then there's ranged attacks like Darkseeker's Venomous Shot and Miguel Garcia's Blood Spike, which are handy for aggroing individual enemies and doing good damage at the same time. EO's Regenerator can be great for bosses you get stuck on, boosting the amount of HP healed for you and your partner. From a passive standpoint, aside from the Weapon Mastery gift that we talked about just, the following are really handy. Her face to swift destruction deals damage dependent on mobility, so if you're building a super quick and mobile build, this can be absolutely fantastic. The Ranger's Stamina Boost is solid for obvious reasons, as is Louis' Strength Dexterity Up passive gift. Queen Revenant's Ambition is great if you want to use heavier armor and blood veils that your current blood code doesn't allow. Naomi's Augmented Regeneration allows you to regen health more times than you currently would be allowed to. And finally, last but by no means least, EO's Bridge to Glory is great for boss battles as it temporarily boosts attack power. If you're grinding the Coco's Revenant's Hunger, which increases haze from defeated enemies, and Davis's Revenant's Greed, which improves enemy drops, are fantastic additions there. With those gifts and tips, you should be smashing everyone in no time whatsoever. We ummed and art about whether to lump this in with the weapons and armor, but there's far too much to say on upgrading and transforming, so we thought it deserved its own category. First things first, upgrading weapons and your blood veil is super important. Focus on this over leveling up your character, you get a better return in damage, especially with the weapon, etc. Finding queen materials to upgrade your weapons early on can be a slow burner. Coco does sell a small amount though. Eventually she sells unlimited supplies of most, but that doesn't help you in the first 10 hours. So, first things first, don't waste them on weapons you won't use. Later on when you are looking for queen materials, these same problems can rear their ugly head, especially when you need queen tungsten to upgrade your weapons to level 10 and your blood veil as well. But if you scoured and got as many depth maps and completed them, you'll be golden. For instance, you can get a fair chunk of tungsten enough to upgrade two weapons and a blood veil in the Misty Ruins found in the Crypt Spire level, Zero District and Void District depth maps, as well as some in the Provisional Government Outskirts. 
It is possible if you so wish to transform weapons and blood veils too. If, for instance, you have some spare weight knocking around, you can use the Atlas Chrome, which you can buy with trading points of Yakimo, and make your weapon a little heavier, but exchange, get more physical damage, better scaling, better defenses, and so on. You can sacrifice physical damage for elemental damage with various chromes, like ice damage with the Fion Chrome, etc. While the Fion Chrome and Co. might trade off a little too much damage, the Atlas Chrome is a no-brainer if you're not taking up your full allotment of weight. But let's get really nerdy for a minute. If you have an amazing dex or strength build with great scaling, as seen in your blood code, represented by the A+, the B, etc., then you could even sacrifice the base damage of a weapon to boost the scaling damage of a weapon, thus giving you more attack power. This will allow you to boost the damage of your weapon without changing its weight, like you would have to with the Atlas Chrome. You can do very similar things with the Blood Vows as well, boosting Drain Power, Defense Stats, and Gifts, with each Chrome having a similar effect there too. The Atlas One, for instance, boosts Drain Attack Power, Defense Stats, and Gift Power, but the expense of weight once again. While the Fin Chrome boosts Ice Attack Power on your weapon, it improves resistance here, but it's probably not worth it to be honest. Revisiting old areas in Code Vein carries with it a number of advantages. Firstly, there's additional haze and items you can get from killing the enemies, which is never anything to grumble over. Perhaps more importantly though, there's potential for side missions, some of which grant depth maps, which in turn can give you some great items and good haze, or even one-time use mastery items that can grant you new gifts to try out with your build, like the tirelessness item, which is found later on in the game in the Provisional Gunman Center and can speed up your stamina recovery time. Luckily, Bandai Namco have put in little indicators, a blue man with a white plus sign on the map, which you can easily see if you teleport into a location and see where they are. So do this often as new people can turn up, people can move around, and so on. If you help out Shang by the outer crossroads missile in the ruined city underground, he'll not only give you missions, which in turn can grant you depth maps, but he also increases his valuables inventory, meaning you can get better valuables and boost your companion's trading points far more quickly. If you're searching for vestiges, items, and side quests, we recommend using Naomi's Prize Perception Gift to learn whether there are uncollected items on the map, combined with Camilla's Treasure Tracker, which lists uncollected items in a certain range. It can make finding items a tad easier. Also, if you're new to Souls-like games, don't forget to use the Lost Shards for an instant haze boost. Oh, and while you're searching for vestiges, don't forget to smash anything and everything you can see because there are some hidden away in some really out of the way places. First things first, before we talk about the right vent for the right job, if you're finding Code Vein isn't too much of a challenge for you with a partner, then you're more than welcome to go at it alone. Get rid of the partner and just be mano a mano with the enemies. And for that, we recommend the following skills for your build. Camilla's Lifesteal, which allows you to restore health upon killing an enemy, and Queen Slayer's Cleansing Light, which allows you to heal slowly over time. That is a active, not passive gift. At times though, you might just need a companion, especially when you hit the last third of the game, and sometimes finding the right person for the right job can be the key to your success. It's worth mentioning that each of the companions has a different weapon, which definitely affects their playstyle. If you want to wail on foes and have support from the periphery, then Mia is your gal. She, however, isn't an ideal partner for some of the later bosses when distractions are vitally important. If you want somebody to get in there and deal some serious damage, then Yakimo is fantastic. But for us, Eo is the perfect companion when you get her later in the story. She is not only a great distraction and does great damage with a halberd, but she also has some really solid range attacks too. She is particularly good for the two boss fights at the end of the Crypt Spire. <laughs> And there you have it folks, 7 top tips to make you a pro at Code Vein, and hopefully some great tips to get you over those tricky mid to end game difficulty spikes. Thanks for watching folks, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and all that jazz, and we'll see you next time. Cheers folks, bye!